Welcome everyone to tonight's Business Coaching Live. Did you know that millions of, the, millions of people in the world, around the world, were caught unawares by what is going on in the world today? People are not earning enough money. People are not earning enough money as much as they earned in the 80s, in the 70s, and it is a big problem. A report came out that nearly 80% of the people who are in Lagos earn only $62 or even less. Some earn much less. This is definitely not enough for all the challenges all the rising costs you know, of rent, of transportation, of school fees for the children. So people are living on edge. So our task tonight is to show you that it is possible even with five loaves and two fishes to feed the 5,000. And so today we'll be looking at how to manage your money wisely so that you can remain financially stable amidst the rising cost of living. Why am I doing this? I'm not doing this because I'm rich. Many of you know, and I've been telling you, I'm not rich. Neighbors know, friends know, everybody around me knows that I am not rich. But I, I am wise. I am wise. And wisdom is doing for me what riches cannot do. So I'm going to be sharing lots of personal wisdom today because even if you're earning $62 a month in a very expensive city in Lagos, there is still something you can do and we'll be looking at that. And I want to say first of all that financial problems, like we say in Nigeria, financial problems are not your, they are not your mate. Financial troubles aren't playing. They are not playing with you. They are not there to play with you. I mean, it's like, you know, when you say, um, you know, armed robbers are coming in and the armed robbers are coming in, to, they are coming to your house at two of midnight and they are coming to give you money. That's not what armed robbers come to do. In the same, the same way, financial troubles aren't playing. And many of you are already old enough to know that. Many of you are old enough to know that because of the challenges, financial challenges you've had literally most of your life. But tonight you are going to hear and get some actionable insights that will help you to deal with your financial journey here on earth. Okay, so poverty is a pharaoh. The reason I want to stress this before we begin is that if the resolve of your poverty to stay is greater than your determination to escape poverty, you are going to remain in poverty. Because, you see, poverty is not a good enemy. And please type that in the chat. Poverty is not a good enemy. There might be good enemies, but poverty is not one of them. This is why, ladies and gentlemen, some people, poverty holds them down. They were born poor. And poverty holds them down through primary school, through secondary school. Everything is a struggle. They finish university. It's, a, it's still a struggle. Before they can get a job, they are already hitting their late 30s. And then even when they get that job, it's under employment. They don't earn enough. And so when they start the family, they pass on the same thing to the, because they are not earning enough. And then some people are already in their 40s, you know, with young children, and you are not able to provide for them. So poverty is vicious. It's a vicious enemy. So when it holds its victim down, it doesn't let go. Poverty can hold its victim down for 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, even unto, the, unto death. Because if you look around you, in your neighborhood, you find people who are dying, owing money. You find people who are dying, in abject poverty you find people who are dying uh, depressed because they never found financial peace okay second point i want to make as we go on is that you can't be casual when it comes to managing your finances 
listen, you can't be casual. I'm saying this because what I'm sharing with us tonight is not casual. It's something I need you to take very, very seriously and also to act on it, not just to listen to this information. You can't escape financial pain casually. Please, everyone, type that in the chat. You can't escape financial problems casually. You can't be casual about it. You cannot. See? So you can't be casual about your financial challenges. So don't let tonight be a casual night. Because tonight might be the night that does it for you. Okay. And these are the countries that have been participating in the live business coaching. So look up the flag there. If you are in the live session and then you don't find your flag there, please type in the chat your country. And then we will update the flag uh, tomorrow. So type the flag, type your country. If your country is not represented on the screen, as you see, please type the country, type your country, and then we will update it. And then as we do this, please go ahead and introduce yourself in the comment section. As usual, tell us where you are watching from, and then tell us a little more about yourself so that other people in the live session can also get to know you and possibly do business with you. Okay, so why am I doing this? For those of you joining us new, this is 1000 day challenge that I took upon myself because I do not want to go to my grave with the wisdom, with the grace, with the uh, incredible things that God has allowed in my life. So I have been blessed to be a blessing to other people. So my name is Obo Awoke Obo. I have had the uncommon privilege to work in the best companies you can think about in the world, Shell and Chevron. I have also had the opportunity to be part of the top business school in the world, Stanford Graduate School of Business of Stanford University through the Stanford Seed Program that I was business advisor for about six years. And I have worked with over 50 industries, whether it is IT or agriculture or financial services, just name them, or manufacturing. So there's a whole lot that I have to pass on. And not only that, what I'm actually most proud of is the family that God has graciously given me. Being able to raise a peaceful family, a God, uh, being able to raise godly children. For me, that is actually what I'm most proud of. And this is why for the 1,000 days that you're spending with me, there are three outcomes, three results, three transformations I want to create for you. Number one is to help you to develop skills and strategies to attain financial independence. We live in a financial universe. You cannot continue to pretend that you do not need to have your finances in order. You cannot continue to procrastinate the issues of your finances because if you don't get it right, it's going to pepper you. And then there are some things you need to do when you are in your teens, when you are in your 20s, when you are in your early 30s, if you don't do them, by the time you get to your 50s, it's going to be terrible because financial problems aren't playing. Remember I told you that at, at the beginning, financial problems aren't, they are not your mate, they are not playing with you. So if you don't give attention to these things right now, that you are in your 20s, in your 30s, by the time you get to your 40s, 50s, 60s, they become much harder. Not impossible, but they become much harder. Second thing I want to create for you in this 1,000 days of live business coaching is to help you scale your business. There's no reason for your business to be small. There's no reason for your side hustle to remain a side hustle for 10 years. Because by the time you side hustle for 10 years, that is side torture. You know, something has to grow. And then the third thing I hope to create for you is to build a loving family. It's a solid family. We all need to have 
our families standing peaceful joyful like it used to be in the good old days but you see family system is breaking down people are too focused on making money now they don't give attention to their relationships at home and then children do not receive the nurture and the care that they deserve so these are the things that i want to create for you in 1000 solid days i think the agenda for today we have basically two points in our agenda today so the first is to uh, take you through the three pillars of financial success these are three pillars that cannot change they cannot change the truth is if you don't have one of these three pillars if you are lacking in one your financial house will collapse your financial destiny will collapse so these are three pillars that you must know and they are simple and then the amazing thing is like i keep on saying these things are common sense this is what our uh, uh, grandpas grandfathers grandmothers our fathers you know in the village did without even going to business schools they didn't go to stanford they didn't go to harvard they didn't go to lagos business school but they practiced these things and then they had financial success you know so often i wonder how my parents with primary school salary in those days how they were able to take seven of us through school it is incredible when my father died and then as we were cleaning the house and i chanced upon his um pay sleep his pay sleep in the 70s in the 80s in the 80s i was shocked and i said how did this man and my mother, who was also a primary school teacher, how did they raise seven of us and even take us through the tertiary institution? It is incredible. So it's doable. But today we have so much money. We have bigger jobs than our parents had. More money. Yeah, it's true. You can say inflation and things like that. But we have more money, more access to more technology, to comfort, to ease of everything. And yet our lives are not up to 10 percent of the quality of what the our, the lives of our parents were we ate good food the air was good there was safety we didn't need to start vigilante and start paying um you know seventy thousand naira seventy seven thousand eighty four thousand naira like we pay in my estate every year and some people pay even much higher than that you know for security we did not need it you know in those days and life was safe high quality you know you could be going out to the market and then you comfortably drop your child your children with your neighbor and then they will take care of your child you come back but today you can't even try those things so we need to go back to find out what did our parents know in the way they managed their finances the limited resources that they had to give us the quality of life that we now have what did they know that we don't know that is now what's going to launch us into the nine strategies for financial stability so every one of you please type financial stability in the comment section everyone remember uh if you're an old timer you remember that i always encourage you to engage in the comment section to type things and as you're hearing something you hear some key word type it down the reason you do that because I have lectured in many universities, University of uh, Ibadan, uh, University of Meduguri, um, University, uh, Stanford University through the, the, the Stanford Seed Program, um, Lagos Business School, China European International Business School. And I can tell you as a veteran professor that if you are listening and writing at the same time, your your assimilation is much 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 better because the moment you type something or you write it down your nervous system as it will uh, resonates with it it captures it and so it becomes easier for you to remember it because you had typed it in the comment section so financial stability excellent financial stability financial stability so that's what we are focusing on right now no matter how much you're earning uh, in the meantime, uh, we'll, you will learn this evening what to do to make sure that you have 
financial stability. All right. So the first part of our agenda is to talk about the pillars of financial success. Okay. Just say that out to yourself. Pillars of financial success. So just where you are watching, just say it. Say it to yourself. Pillars of financial success. Okay. Um, so th there are three pillars of financial success. Three pillars. They are called pillars because that's what's holding your financial life. So whether you are a business owner or you are an employee or you are a single mom or mompreneur, whatever it is that you do, or you are into network marketing, or you are a plumber, an electrician, an engineer, a builder, construct, a construction worker, whatever you are, there are three pillars, these solid pillars for financial success. The first pillar is making money. And that is the first pillar because that is where everything begins. If that pillar collapses, <laughs> then there's no, the other ones don't even exist. The second pillar is managing your money. So it's not enough to make it, you must manage it. There are lots of people who make money, lots of money. Some of you even here, you make money, but it appears that you are poor and that you're always running into financial trouble because you don't have the second pillar. So it's not enough to make your money. You also need to manage your money. Manage your money. Because as you're making your money, it is instantly under attack. The moment the alert hits your bank account, it is instantly under attack. So many things will be attacking it, will be tugging it, you want to tear it off your hands and all that. Okay? Is this making sense? Type makes sense. Type makes sense in the chat. Okay. Type makes sense. So, making it is not enough. You must make it as the first pillar. The second pillar is to manage your money. Now, that is not enough. <laughs> because if you're making it and you're managing it, you still need to multiply it. Because if you don't multiply it, you will discover over, over time that you have little and little and little to manage until there's nothing to manage. And this is where a lot of people are right now. Because every income that drops into your bank account, every income that comes into your wallet has two parts. I can't emphasize this enough. In fact, in my first book, which I wrote in 2008, financial freedom for every busy professional. I taught this. I emphasize this. Your income has two parts, two components. The first component is, well, the bread, and the bread is for the eater. That's the part of it that you spend, that you eat. That's bread. The second part of your income is seed. And you don't eat seed. And then when I say seed, I know that the religious community uh, has hijacked that word seed, but it's not really what it is. I'm not talking about it in the way the religious people talk about seed. They talk about seed and all that, but seed is just that seed, and that's what you plant, that's what you invest. So that's part of multiplying your money. Because if you eat your bread and also eat your seed, what is one word for that? Type it in the chat. What is one word for the person who eats the bread and also eats the seed together with the bread in that your salary or in that income that comes into your business. One word, just give me one word for a person like that. For a farmer who eats the bread, eats the food, uh, bread and also eats the seed. What is one word for that person? And then what is that person going to do when it is time to plant again after you have eaten your seed? So this is why these are the three pillars, and I need you to bear them in mind, okay? These are three pillars of financial success. Learn it, teach it to your children, teach it to your co -work. There's nothing else. If you can do these three things, there's nothing else. Yes, I can see Joseph uh, said stupidity. That's one word. Of course, that's what it is. That's stupidity, to eat your, your bread and also eat the seed. Uh, yeah. Umebo says it's foolish. Uh, Omanoye says it's waster. 
these are all great words and believe me some of some of you here you know as i say to you as as it is yeah lillian says uh, a foolish man some of you here are actually what you are describing here you know and i always want everyone to be true to themselves and especially if you follow me and you want to learn from me because all of you who have been following me you know that i am very very uh, big when it comes to being authentic and when it comes to being vulnerable all right i have made foolish mistakes myself i was that man at some point in my life i was that man who ate the bread and also ate the seed so let's take the first pillar to make money so this is where it all begins because you must generate cash you must generate cash type in the comment section everyone type in the comment section i must generate cash i want you to feel it feel those words as you type as you say it in your mind and as you type it in the comment section i must generate cash why must you generate cash because that is what kick starts all the other processes of financial freedom that's what kick starts everything you know, um, some of you may, in your village houses or even where, even where you live in the city, you, you probably have this um, uh, water pumping machine. Uh, I think they call it Zoom or something like that. You know, when you want to turn it on, you first of all prime it. You prime it by putting some water uh, in it somewhere and then you prime it and then it starts. It's exactly the same way. Cash is what primes your financial freedom. If you don't generate cash, you can't become financial, financially free because the cash eventually forms the seed that you are going to multiply so that your financial journey can become smoother and smoother with time. Okay? So the first part of making money is to generate uh, cash, all right? So, and this can happen through um, your employment. It can happen through your side hustle. It can, hap it can happen through your business income, uh, the business you do, your entrepreneurship. But however you have to legally do it, you've got to generate cash. You've got to generate cash. Don't steal it. Don't defraud another person. Don't take bribe. Don't generate cash unethically. Don't. Because I'm old enough to let you know that it is important how you generate your cash. So don't generate cash that is tainted with blood. Don't generate cash that is tainted with something that destroys other people or even destroys yourself. You know, like some people sell their bodies to generate cash. Some people sell substances, you know, harmful substances, drugs to generate cash and all that because it does not work that way. Cash will punish you. I'm telling you, if you get it the wrong way, cash will fight back. All right. So generate cash. Now, the other thing you need to in, the, in this particular pillar is you need to constantly increase your earning potential. How do you increase your earning potential? by becoming more valuable if you are an, empl an employee a professional how can you make yourself more valuable maybe a postgraduate degree maybe some certification maybe some online course you take to increase your skills so make sure that on a daily monthly yearly basis that you're increasing your earning potential because I have met people who are earning the same thing today that they were earning uh, five years or ten years ago. Why? Because you've not increased your earning potential. Constantly identify high income opportunities or business opportunities that can you can use to generate cash. So that is the first pillar. Pillar number two, manage your money. Everybody type manage your money. Type manage your money. Type manage your money. Yes, I can see what Victor uh, 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 put in the comment section. To increase my earnings potential, I need to be more valuable. Absolutely. That's an aha moment. And I like that. 
whenever you get an aha moment type it in the chat malik says earn cash legitimately very important uh, and malik i want to emphasize that with you i want to really emphasize that with you earn cash legitimately earn cash legitimately make sure that you do not have cash in your life that you didn't earn legitimately do it because it's going to corrupt your it's going to corrupt your financial peace i am telling you it's going to corrupt your financial peace i mean um uh, some uh, time ago uh, my family and i were holidaying in the u.s and um I w we went we went to shop um I, I believe it was a walmart we went to different places but i think this one was at walmart and after we shopped and then pushed our cart to the um is it the teals or the, where they call it you know the cash cash point um while i was there i saw a small nail cutter i saw a small nail cutter you know usually when you're waiting to pay you have all these uh, products you know handy products displayed you know where which you can pick up so and i needed that um uh, nail cutter and i picked it and put in the put on the uh, on the teal okay so that moving uh, whatever it's called okay so if you know what it's called please you can put it in the chat you know but so now they finished um and then gave uh, me the total and I gave my card and then paid. Now, when we got to the car, to the car we were using at the car park, which was quite a distance, you know, from the, from the supermarket. You know, if, if you've gone to some of these uh, Walmart super centers, it's usually very massive, very massive. So you can walk and walk very long distances you know, to the car park. Then, as we were putting the things in, I was just looking at this long list and then noticed that the nail cutter, it was 99 cents. I remember it was 99 cents that it was not captured in the receipt. I had to leave my wife and the children right there and I walked right up back to the store and said this was not captured. And for some reason, well, it didn't beep, maybe because it's just a low value 99 cents thing. So it didn't beep. So I had to go back and tell them this was not captured. And then I gave them the 99 cents, the $1. Now, why did I do that? Because I told myself, I do not want to have one cent that is not my money in my financial life. I do not want to have that. Okay. So I'm emphasizing what Malik said and cash legitimately is so important especially for this generation because many people just seem to think that well the end justifies the means and so they are ready to do and undo just to get cash do not do that you will destroy yourself so second pillar manage your money all right is anybody getting value is anybody getting value so far type in the chat okay uh Reinhold, thank you for joining us. And then, like we said earlier, please tell us what country you are joining from so we can update our country flags. Trisha Montgomery, thank you for joining us. Um, I see you. Um, Eka Events TV, thank you for joining. Akintade Oluwatoba, thanks. I see you. Okay, great, great. And Peter, thank you. Peter Hirst, thank you for joining. And then Diva Misumu, thank you for joining. Please tell us what countries you're joining us from. All right. So the second pillar is to manage your money. Manage your money. What does this involve? Three key activities in managing your money. The first one is budgeting. And I can tell you from my own personal example, because I have not been the best example when it came to budgeting. But the only thing is that I'm aware, fully, fully aware of how powerful, how important budgeting is in managing our finances. Because one way to guarantee that a lot of your finances will go to waste is to have no budget. And it happened to me before I became very, very budget conscious. You will waste money. You will wake up at the end of every month. They will pay you. 
and then within one week you will get your salary within one week or two weeks you will be asking yourself where did all that money go and you will have no answer and the reason is there's no budgeting if it has happened to you in the chat if you have if it has happened to you please put in the comment section yeah say yes you know in the comment section if it has happened to you you know you've ever come to after you were paid but within one week or two weeks you are wondering where did the money go and you have no idea where the money went you are not managing your money wisely because you're not budgeting the second part of managing your money is saving remember like i said part of your income is bread for the eater and the other one is seed for the sower okay is seed for the sower yeah some people are saying in the chat that that's happened to them that's very correct it happened to me for many years i will never be able to tell where the money went and then, and especially in those days, you know, we weren't, um, like when I was working in uh, Chevron, uh, that was when that thing really happened to me. I used to wonder, where did all the money go? And then someone even suggested that it is demons, that uh, there's a demon, uh, there's a money-eating demon that um, was stealing my money, you know. So that was not true. Um, I just wasn't disciplined and I didn't have a budget. So without a budget, you can't tell where your money is, is going. All right, saving a lot of people tell me in in many places in africa i i've heard it a lot in ghana i heard it in ghana um i hear it a lot in nigeria and i i suppose it's the same thing in many places people tell you oh i don't earn enough money to be able to say that the money i ate I, I earn is not even enough and then my response to you two responses the first one is during our financial fitness challenge the last edition uh, by the way, the next one is coming up just up a week. And then uh, if you have not become part of it, I think you're missing greatly. Uh, because all these things we talk about there, you get to implement them. Uh, so you can type in the comment section. Uh, if you need the payment details to enroll, we can send that to you. So during that ch uh, challenge, we were talking about saving and we're talking about building your emergency fund. And then, of course, these reasons were coming. Then one lady in the group shared something incredible. That was like a turning point for many people. She said she shared something about her own experience with saving consistently. She amazed herself because she gave herself time to save. And then she was able to start um, uh, a street shop, retail shop from that. Then after the financial fitness challenge, her husband was so impressed with her progress that the man gave her <clears throat> 2 million naira or something like that, more than that. She now upgraded what she was doing to a supermarket. And then she said, she made a statement. She said, you will never know how much you can save until you begin. So that's my first statement. The second statement is, it is not about the amount of money. It is about the habit. It's about this thing. You see, I keep talking about the nervous system a lot because, you know, we, we, there's a lot about behavioral economics that we should pay more attention to than we do physical cash or that we do running around to do entrepreneurship. We need to understand what's going on in our brain. You know, and then when you start living at that neurological level, you'll be amazed what you find out. So you really want to wire your brain, what you're saving. So even if you're earning that 100,000 Naira a month and it is not enough, you don't have to save like my mentor, the billionaire mentor that many of you are well uh, know about right now told me 10%, that 10%. So even if you can save 10%, of 100,000 Naira, you can do 5%, you can do 1%. It's not really the amount, but you see, you need to rewire your brain. You need to rewire your brain to see yourself as someone who is not wasteful, to begin to see yourself as someone who can delay gratification because you need that delayed gratification. You need that delayed gratification in order to become financially free. So no matter how tight things are, put aside 1,000. Then let your brain get used to putting aside 1,000. 
during the fitness challenge, I will tell you what to do with it because I can understand. People say, oh, if you save money, uh, inflation will wipe it out and things like that. But there's a way to do it. And you're right because you don't really want to keep cash. So that's not, we're talking, that's not what we're talking about. You don't really want to keep cash because it loses value. But the point is don't spend everything you earn because that's a recipe for poverty. Number uh, the third thing is debt. Debt dealt with me. Oh my goodness. And then if debt has dealt with you like it did with me, you know, being in debt, please type in the chat. <laughs> Just type debt has dealt with me. The thing dealt with me. I am telling you. I know there's a school of thought that says, you know, you know, good debt, bad debt. I agree. I agree. I totally understand where they are coming from. But my friends, if you do not know how to handle debt, please don't take it. If you do not know how to handle borrowing, don't go into it. It is a trap and it's a chain that once you enter, until you deal with the issue of debt, you cannot make progress. I'm telling you, financially speaking, you cannot make. So be very, very strategic about the way you handle financial ob obligations. And then, one other thing that we do in this part of the world, people borrow money and they do not pay back. Do not do that. You've borrowed money from your friends. If you borrowed money from your friends and then you've not paid it back, please pay that money back. And if you don't have it right now, make sure you let your friend know that you have a plan to pay it back. I am telling you, that thing will torture your financial peace. So be very, very, very deliberate and strategic in the way you handle financial obligations and avoid overwhelming debt. And if you must take debt, if you must take a loan, let it not be for eating. Let it not be a loan to buy clothes. You know, in Nigeria, we do stupid things. People take loans to buy Aswebi. So for some of you who are not Nigerians, Aswebi is, you know, when... Uh, your friend is wedding or burying the father or something. So they have this uniform that um, I hear there are so, as, as a bees that has, uh, as as much as 250,000 naira, 500. And of course, the top, top people in the society, they have a shabby of 1 million. Stupid, I'm telling you. And people borrow to do that. People borrow to do marriage. People borrow to do birthday celebration. And then when you ask them, they say, well, that they are hoping to get money during the celebration for people to spray money on them and then they will pay off their debt. How can somebody, how can we be this dumb as a people? Why get, must you have that kind of celebration at the time, <laughs> at that particular time? And you're boring. And that's why when they borrow to do that thing, they are so desperate. Asking you give to my gift has not come my gift because they know they have to pay back. So manage your money wisely. The third pillar of financial stability is to multiply your money. These things are common sense. Multiply it. Don't just like the guy that was given one talent and then he hid it in the ground. You know, God hated it and he said so. Many of us are hiding our talents. You know, we are not blossoming, we are not we are not serving, we are not creating as much as we should create, all right? So how do you multiply your money? That one you had set apart, you had saved, this is where you now use it. You invest in stocks, you invest in real estate, you invest in other assets, mutual funds and treasury bills and things like that, that yield um, money. So let your money work for you instead of you working for your money. So that's how you multiply. Then the other part of multiplying your money is acquiring financial literacy. It's actually more important that you educate yourself, dear Nigerians. Many of you spend more money on your stomach than you spend on your brain. You don't buy books. You don't attend coaching events. You don't attend seminars. You don't watch educational things on YouTube and things like that. You are not growing your mind. If you are not growing your mind, you are not growing your money. Because your mind and your money are very, very closely tied. 
And so if you're not growing your mind, your money is not going to grow. So acquire knowledge. That's one way you multiply your money. And then look out constantly for opportunities. Opportunities that align with how much risk that you can take. And then long-term financial goals. That's how you multiply your money. All right. So in the last part of our agenda, we will now go into the nine strategies right nine strategies that um, you can use in this difficult time where there is um, you know food food inflation like people have come to call it food inflation uh, fuel uh, increase energy price increase and things like that the number one strategy ladies and gentlemen is to take charge take charge Please type in the comment section. Everyone type in the comment section. Take charge. That is the number one. I know there are other things, other strategies. There are eight more strategies, but I put this one as number one. The reason is, I mean, even like right now, they're begging in Nigeria. And I don't know about other countries represented here. Um, uh, the Gambia. Gambia is here. Uh, Ghana is here. I think South Africa is here and all that. So I don't know about your country, but the begging, the begging has gone up top notch in the country. You know, I went to pick up a family member uh, a few days ago from the airport. When he came out, he, he hasn't been around for a couple of months. And he was able to notice just how bad it has, be, it has become at the airport. Everybody will beg. Customs will beg, immigration will beg, police will beg, touts will beg, everybody is begging. So, don't be a beggar. Own your financial future. And listen, it is okay to suffer for some time. You know, so when you are going through adversity, you don't want to start going around looking for somebody to, to save you immediately. You are robbing yourself of the opportunity to stand on your two feet. Every simple thing, you know, your the, the your only strategy is who will I call now? Who 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 will give me 10k now? Who will that is terrible. Take charge. Because some people are 40 and they are still doing this in their 40s. Some people are in their 50s, they are still doing begging for money. Because you see, they got used to depending on other people's pockets. Type in the chat. I will not depend on other people's pockets. Okay, in fact, put it this way. I will depend on my pocket. Type in the chat. Everybody. I want you to make that commitment. Type, I will depend on my own pocket. Stop making plans based off uh, of other people's money or handouts that politicians or somebody, some uncle or auntie will give you. Become a man. Become a woman of resilience, of independence. It's not going to be easy when you start. But you see, every time you run into trouble and then you look for someone to, so to solve it for you, and you continue like that until you're in your 40s and in your 50s and 60s, there's no hope for you. Because every time you run into financial uh, trouble, you are, uh, you, you are afraid. And then you continue with that fear. Who can I call now? Let me call my mom, see? Let me call my sister, who, who is in the UK. Let me call... And then you see, the interesting thing about this thing is everyone has their own financial challenges. So many times, if you're not owning your financial future, you're actually being very, very selfish. Most of these beggars are selfish. They come to me and they say, oh, boy, uh, please, can, can I get 400K from you? And they did not even ask you, first of all, how are you doing? Do you even have this 400K? They assume that this is old bull, therefore he has it. But you don't even know about my own financial obligations and commitments. You don't know what I'm going through. You don't know what your uncle is going through. You don't know what that's your aunt in, the, in America that you are depending. You don't know what she's going through. But okay, I have my auntie in America. Phew, uh, a phone call or WhatsApp message. Auntie, ah, food, no day house. And you are ashamed of yourself. And you are 30, you are 33 years. You're calling someone in America, auntie food, no day house. So that is terrible. In fact, God forbid that things like that should come out of my mouth. 
there's also something else people say when they haven't met you for when you hadn't seen each other for a long time they they when they see you they say ah uh, uh oh boy you have forgotten me oh and this the person talking is is 50 something oh say you've forgotten me i did hear this suffer. you forgot him what what you know don't do that okay so that is number one it's true that things are tough you may not be earning enough money but until you decide to take charge you will continue to depend on other people you continue to depend on people so-called destiny helpers to come and save you okay Ian, thank you for joining us Ian Walker uh, Deshawa, I see you. Uh, thanks for joining. Bright, uh, DK, thank, thank you for being here. Austin and Joko, Obika, uh, okay, Chuku, thank you for being here. All right, so the strategy number two, and if you fail in strategy number one, all these other strategies will not work. Strategy number two, when things are hard like it is right now, and then you have all this rising cost of inflation, you see, this is counterintuitive. What I'm, what I'm showing you on the screen is counterintuitive. But if there's a time you should actually invest in your brain more than at any time, is when things are like this. This is when you should actually learn as much as possible how money works. Because ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you, there are people who are making far more money now through this uh, economic def uh, depression than even when things were going on. Because they're using financial literacy serious ones there are young nigerians i meet young nigerian women i said um sometime last month one of them did a webinar and i was part of it she is into uh, beauty products and things like that but she, but she was talking about um uh, about marketing and things like that you know that time that day and then she had nearly 1000 people on the zoom call young woman probably in her early 30s or something this woman is making incredible money. She doesn't have any time to jack back to run away from night. She's making a lot of money every and I, and I she didn't want to disclose the figure. But this girl is easily netting 50 60 million naira every single month. She spends because she so she showed us her Facebook ad account. Between uh, in the in the past six months, she spent 18 million naira on ads alone. So imagine it: if you're spending three million naira on ads, you can imagine what you're getting. And she was saying, she easily nets uh, 10x, 20x, 30x what she spends. And she, uh, uh, and and she's doing this thing in the same place where you and where you and uh, where you and me are, <laughs> because she knows. What you don't know. And, and therefore, if we can learn and increase, the more we increase our financial literacy, the more we increase our chances to earn a higher income. So educate yourself. Most importantly, please surround yourself with people who are financially wise. This is why the financial fitness community that I started is a very good one. Because you, you don't go there to discuss comedy or discuss a uh, woman's... Uh, body parts and things like that all these stupid things you see uh, in your social media feeds these are people who are going somewhere you know and they're holding each other accountable so you need people like that in your life surround yourself with financially wise people connect yourself in on online forums and then connect yourself with people who are actually achieving results there are many of them in, uh, uh, in on, on facebook instagram who i follow because these people are constantly delivering value. So I follow this incredible gentleman like Bradley uh, that I think about. Um, I, I was following Gary Vaynerchuk until I got uh, really tired of the cursing. But I think he's coming down a little bit now with cursing. And then a couple of people, you know, on um, YouTube. I'm learning a lot every single day. I impute at least three hours of education every single day, including today. So I'm in the bathroom, I'm listening, I'm in the kitchen, you know, uh, preparing something to eat, I'm listening. I'm jogging in the morning, I'm listening. So surround yourself with financial education and financial wisdom, it's important. Number three, before I start talking about the technicalities, you see, all these things I'm talking about, first of all, have to do with mindset. 
uh, from uh, the next strategy, I'll start tell, talking about the specifics. Stop comparing yourself with your neighbor. Everybody's journey is different. Oh my goodness. Everybody's journey is different. Okay, so they bought a four-wheel drive big Jeep. That's okay. Why would you want to go and start looking for money to buy just because the people buy? And then why in the world do you buy things to show off? And you see, as I'm talking to you, as I'm telling you this, you know, this, this, is, one of, this is one of the things, keeping our people poor, even though they are earning that uh, 100,000 naira. You see somebody earning 100,000 naira and he is holding iPhone 15. Have you seen something like that? Or he's holding Samsung. I don't use Samsung. I use iPhone. So, like, you really know, like, the expensive Samsung. Please type in the comment section if you have seen something like that. You've seen a, you've seen somebody, even your colleagues. Because, my goodness, to own iPhone 15, I hear that thing in Nigeria is about 1.5 million or something like that. That is already more than the annual salary of people we are talking about. And then you, some of the phones, some of the phones that people use, uh, galax, um, some Galaxy, Samsung phones and all that, are like 700, 800K. That is already eight months, eight months of pay in one, one gadget. What is the matter with, what is the matter with us? What is the matter with us? So we use it and then we go around and some people say, oh, I have iPhone 15. And they're so invested in, in that thing is wrong with us so many of the challenges that we are having here is not because that the money is not enough we are just wasteful and downright foolish why what are you doing with the uh, uh, iphone 15 i don't have iphone 15 that i can have that i can buy it does not mean that i can afford it the one i'm using now iphone 11 they it was almost like putting a, a gun to my head before i was able to buy it and it was refurbished um three years ago while I was in the United States, was it was it two years or three years ago, uh, 2022? The, you know, the, they literally put a gun to my head <laughs> to buy that refurbished $400. Be, because before that, I used iPhone 6 for years. iPhone 6, that's what I used for years. Because one, it's making phone call for me. Two, it's make, doing camera. In fact, the reason that somebody convinced me to buy this one is that they, because I do a lot of videos every day when I'm jogging and all that. He said that, that the camera and that the video of this one is much better. And you are buying iPhone 15 to impress people. Goodness gracious me. People do the same thing. You can't afford a car, but you go buy because you want to be like your neighbor. Don't do it. Strategy number four. Create now, start paying attention. Create a detailed monthly budget allocating uh, funds. Uh, see, budget will set you free. Oh my goodness, did I just say that? Please type that in the comment section. A budget will set you free. Type it in the comment section. A budget will set you free. So this is where it starts becoming technical because if you don't do this, you will not know where your money is going. And I think over time, over time, uh, our women in the house have done very well. And then some of us have also done very well because you could, you could tell, um, you, could, you could almost tell this month, this is what you're going to spend. Or this is how much you spend on gas in the year. So some of those things. So if you are not earning enough, so hopefully you come to a point where you will not need a budget. But, but to be honest, we, we all need uh, a sense of what, where our money is going. So create a budget, okay? Yes, budget will set me free. Yes, Paul, you're correct. Budget, type it in the chat. Budget will set you free. Budget will set me free. Absolutely. I, I want this to be a mantra for you and then i'm going to give you something that i would like you to screenshot or you can always go back to this video and pause it and then look at this okay so basically your budget would state where your um your your sources of income you know i was forced into 
um, the budget consciousness a couple of years ago when I had to start feeling CSS profile. E was one of the most, if not the most difficult forms that I had to fill. Because before this time, you know, um, you just know, okay, at the end of a month, you know, this is your salary and all that. So you buy food, you buy whatever, but you don't, you don't really, you know, until you now had to sit down and fill this form, this required form. And then everything about your business income, your landed property, your whatever, you had to know, like in your asset column, what actually you have and what, what you're worth. The first time I did it, it was an eye opener. When I saw my, what, because what came out there was my, um, my net worth. You know, you think, you, you think that you have some uh, impressive net, net worth until you do this exercise. You know, and then you capture all your assets and then all your liabilities and then you, you will be humbled. You will be humbled. Okay, so this is the first part. How much is your salary or your wages? How much is your business income, right? Or what you do freelance? Uh, if you have some rental business, how much is it? How much is your dividends, you know, from investments and other income? You capture that. So you say for 2025, because your budget for 2025, just the way governments do budget, that's the way individuals, and also that's the way companies do budget. What did you plan? What is planned? What is what do you project to earn in the next 12 months? You need to put it down. This thing will set you free. So in the next 12 months, you're expecting to earn 12 million. Then later you bring it back and then you can put this in Excel spreadsheet. You go back and say, okay, you actually plan to earn 12 million, but at the end of it, you did four. Okay, then you can begin to find insight from your data. Why was why did, why was it four and not twelve? What could you have done differently and done better? Okay, so you do for that. Then you have all these uh, special categories in your budget. You know, you come to the expense category. So this other one is the, the previous one I showed is the income. Now, under the expense, there are different categories. Okay, essentials, of course, you must pay rent. You must have accommodation. You must pay for electricity. Those are essentials. Then you have your savings and investment. That's where you do emergency fund, which I'll talk about. And then one of the fantastic things that happened, like when I was um, in employment, and I think that many employers have it, is cooperative. And then people are able to make um, contributions, which eventually that, um, you know, they use for different things. So you can screen capture this or go back to the replay and then use that for budget. Strategy number five, learn new income skills. This will help you to increase your earning potential because part of becoming financially stable during inflation, during economic uh, crisis like this, during tough times, is to learn how to increase because what you have is not enough. And you have to admit that it's not enough. So you have to learn to increase what you are earning. Okay, so you can learn new skills. A lot of people have changed their lives. Young children change their lives because they learned digital marketing. Some learned coding, and I'm encouraging lots of children to learn coding. It's not as complicated as it was when we went to school. They were telling us about COBOL, about Fortran, about all the, it was complicated. But today, you can sit in the comfort of your house and then with only YouTube, learn coding, you know? that and as soon as you finish learning it nobody's asking your age or your university there are remote jobs that you can do so explore gigs because additional earnings can make a lot of difference how many of you here if you have an additional income of even 500 dollars would it make incredible difference type in the chat how many of you if you have an i'm even saying 500 dollars because 500 dollars in nigeria is like 750 thousand how many of you will even an additional one hundred thousand naira an additional hundred dollars or two hundred dollars make a difference in your situation right now type in the chat how many of you that if you earn an additional two hundred dollars a month or 250 it will make a tremendous difference in your life in your budget in your family right now type in the chat 
it will for me it will for me because my my diesel generator diesel diesel is um, a thousand to a thousand three hundred uh, liter the last time i bought you know a diesel for my diesel generator and um, so in a month and i have a diesel truck to fill it up um would be would be requiring about 150,000 is, is a diesel truck 150 to 120 so an additional 200 dollars uh, can make significant difference right now yeah so i can see in the chart yeah it will for you it will for you all right so look for those opportunities by learning new skills and seeking new opportunities um this is actually number six i repeated five cut down on expenses okay electricity you can use the so-called uh, energy saving it is helped me a lot okay and then turn off lights when you're not using it electricity is very expensive right now especially for many of us who are in band a uh, before they put us in this band a thing um i typically will use 50 60 000 naira um if we run aces and all that like in the month now if we have to run it the way we used to run before We'll be needing about 180 to 200,000 naira just for electricity. So you cut down as much as possible and limit generators only when it's essential. Then, <laughs> if you have uh, three cars, um, I think you should be wise, you know, what to do with it. And then, if you can share, right, you know, just find ways to cut down expenses, you know, clothes. You know, I used to use uh, a fashion designer, you know, and then he could make my clothes for 40,000 naira. Um, this uh, senator a couple of years ago then from 40 he now went to 80 from 80 he went to 150 <laughs> from 150 he was now quoting like 200 and something for me i said okay guy i have to look for another tailor and then i found people who are charging uh, he's very good he's really really very good excellent brand has grown internationally you know um but I found that there are upcoming tailors, you know, who are also doing very well and they charge a fraction of that um, and, and then work for me. So look for ways to cut down expenses. Of course, limit debt, avoid loans, resist the urge to take out loans, resist the urge. And many Nigerians fall uh, into the trap of these loan sharks, you know, these loan, loan apps. Okay. If it has happened to you, let us know in the chat and um, so find a way to focus and negotiate the existing debt so that you can free up more of your income so limit debt that's a strategy um strategy number eight cook at home it's not only healthier and cheaper it's also um it's not also only cheaper it's healthier all right and significantly cheaper than dining out or ordering takeaways because you buy your food, you know what you bought, you know what you're putting in the pot. Then for me, for instance, there are things I don't eat, I don't put in the food that we, we eat in the house. But if I go to out, go to eat out, I don't know what they put in it, you know. So I don't use certain things, you know, but people commonly use them. Uh, number nine, shop at local markets, okay, and village markets. Um, so even though right now I'm in Lagos, the dried fish because now the good thing is and i don't know if it's the same for other countries um here but the good thing in nigeria right now is that the logistics have improved a lot so you can have someone in nasarawa or in joss uh, uh, buy tomatoes for you and send it down to lagos and it is still far cheaper or send it to enugu or to abuja and it's still far cheaper than if you bought it in the market at abuja has anybody experienced that okay then there is uh, someone who supplies us crayfish from source and then i don't need to go there i just went there once and established contact with them so now if i need dried fish they send me fish okay uh, actually have some coming tomorrow and when you buy sixty thousand naira worth of fish from from them if you go to buy the same quantity here in Lagos, you're probably paying like 150,000. So find such opportunities to shop from local markets and from villages and then from these interior markets. And then they can send it to you where you are, okay? And then finally, um, emergency fund, 
So save a small amount every month because there are unexpected things that come. Okay, we have had unexpected expenses, you know, like if somebody, family member dying, and then if the person dies, you know, you've got to bury them. You can, you can, you know, you've got to bury them. Um, there are expenses of about, you know, a child falling sick in the middle of the night, and then you have to go to the hospital. That's not going to be the time to start calling and looking for who to borrow money from. So it's important to start every month, save a little part just for unexpected expenses. And then for me, I put it in an investment account that is liquid. Liquidity meaning that I can access it on short notice because I'm not a friend of leaving cash in the bank, but you must save. All right. Okay, did this help you? Put in the chat. That's the um, the, the end of our session tonight. Um, so you can put your questions in the chat. And then if you want to explore this subject more, you can also let me know in the comment section. So I want to thank you for being part of tonight. Spread the word. Share the video to your family members. It can help them because right now things are challenging. But things don't have to be that terrible. If you apply the wisdom that we have shared tonight, I am very, very convinced that it can make a very definite difference in your life. Thank you, Malik. Malik says, extremely helpful. Timmy Press says, God value. You're welcome. All right. Aderemi, you're welcome. Okay. Adeshawa, thank you very much. Take charge. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So I will see you guys at exactly the same time tomorrow. Spread the word. Let people come and take advantage of this. It's free. Uh, so if you're getting value, make sure you tell other people about it. And then I'll see you same time tomorrow. So you all have a very good evening.